In this video, I am going to show you how you manage users inside of Smartsheet. Now, inside of Smartsheet, there are users and there are contacts. Users are people that you invite into your projects, your sheets, and your workspaces that have roles and administrative privileges or editing privileges and can do different things with the sheets. Now, your contacts or your contact list are people that you've added in that you are designating to uh, look at your sheet and, and share your sheet with. However, they're not defined as users inside of Smartsheet. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. If you go down to your account icon in the bottom left hand corner and click on that, you will see that we have user management. This is where we'll manage our users and you have my Smartsheet contacts. Now the contacts are private to you and no one else in your organization or in your project or sheet will see these contacts unless you've shared them inside of one of the sheets. So to see what this looks like, let's create a new sheet. If you go to the top right hand corner in the browse menu and you click on the create button, then go down and click the grid button and we'll create a simple grid and we'll just call this managing users and hit OK. This creates a new sheet for us. We can go ahead and click on the name to open up that sheet. And inside of this, this is a typical sheet inside a smart sheet. You'll see you have your primary column and then your other columns. Typically, the primary column is for tasks. So we'll just say this is a task name here. And in this column, let's go ahead and make this a contact list column so that you can see the differences between the users and the contacts. So first go up to the column and there are three dots for a menu and we want to click on that. And then you want to go down to edit column properties. It's going to ask us for a name. So we'll just call this assign to as if we were assigning uh, these tasks to different people. And it's going to ask for a column type. Go ahead and click this drop down list. And then what we want to select is contact list. When we do, it's going to ask us for some more information. Do we want to allow multiple contacts per cell? No. Do we want to restrict to list values only? No. And do we want to add any contacts right now? We're not going to do that. So just go ahead and click the OK button. And now you can see it's changed the name to assign to and all of these different cells are have this drop down box for the different contacts. So if we click on this little arrow for this drop down box, you will see that the one user that's in here is me or the one contact is me. So let's go ahead and add another contact in here. So we're going to click the add new button and it's going to ask us for a name and an email address. When you're done, go ahead and click OK. And it's going to say because you assigned a row in the sheet, you can now notify team members when a row gets assigned to them. We're not going to do that right now, so click not right now. And you can see that that contact has now been added in. So you can see Susan is here. If we click on this drop down menu, you can see the two contacts that are in here, me and Susan. So what we want to do is go ahead and take a look at the contact list real quick and then we'll look at the users. So if you go back down to your account settings and you click on your account icon and you go to my smart sheet contacts, you are going to see that Susan has been added as a contact inside of here. Now, again, these are private for me as the owner of uh, this account and your contacts will be private to you. Now, go ahead and hit the close button. And let's go over, click on the account button again, and go up to user management. So here we have the user management area. And this is where you can manage all the users that have been invited into your projects or your sheets. So here at the top, you can see we have add user, we, where we can add a new user. We have more actions. If we click on that, you can see we can download CSV files. We can remove emails from sharing. We can download user lists and publish item reports, and we can bulk update users. Below that is the filter list. So you can type in someone's name or email address and filter out those people. To the right of that is a drop down menu where you can, you can uh, categorize people by admins or non admins or resource viewers, or if they're active or if they've been invited or declined. So you can take a look at all those.
Below that is the actual users. So you can see that we have some menu options here to the left on this icon. If we click on that, we can edit the user. We can send invite email and password reset emails. We can download uh, reports and transfer ownerships to items and groups. We can remove user sharing access. We can view group membership, remove from all groups and delete user. Now you have to have an admin one active user on the account. So we can't delete this one, but you also see they have their email, their name, their status, and what they have uh, administrative rights to. So system admin, group admin, and resource viewer. Let's go ahead and add in a new user. So we're going to click the add user button. And we are going to type in the name of the user that we want. Now, Susan is only a contact at this point, and we want to make her a user so that she has some administrative properties into this account. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and type in her email. And I hit the tab button and I'll save that out. You can also select from Gmail. So if you're using Gmail in your organization and you want to pull in contacts from there, you can do that. It makes it really handy. And also you can share an invite link. Now it says valid for your business email addresses only. So you'll have to be using valid business email addresses for this to work, but you can copy a invite link and share that with other people in your organization. And they can just click on that, use the business email address and have access to the account. So we can go ahead and hit send invite. And when we do, you can see that Susan has been added, the emails added, the name, and then you can see the status is invited. And then you can see the different administrative uh, roles that she has. So system admin, group admin, and resource viewer. If you needed to change those, just go to the menu, click on that again, and then go to edit user. And then here we can see the information and the different roles or responsibilities that we can give Susan. So we can turn licensed user on and off, uh, giving them the ability to create and own their own sheets. System admin can be turned on and off, can manage users and accounts. Group admin can create and edit groups and resource viewer can access resource views. So you can change these if you want. We won't worry about that right now. We'll just hit the cancel button. So you can uh, go ahead and add in and edit any people into your team if you want to. You can change the name of the uh, account at the top left hand corner, it says account name. If you click on that, it will allow you to actually edit the account profile. So uh, maybe we can just call this um, say Jeremy's team and hit save. And then it will save that out. So when you're done there, go ahead and hit the close button in the bottom right hand corner. So that is how you add users inside of Smartsheet. Remember, users are different than contacts. Um, contacts will just li live inside of your sheet and are private to you. Users will have access rights inside of your account so that they can uh, create their own sheets, their own columns, their own reports, and different things of that nature. But basically, that is how you manage different users inside of Smartsheet.